The domain name system or DNS is a critical component of network infrastructure, translating domain names into the IP addresses, facilitating communication between devices on the internet. So let's dive into the world of DNS resolver setting and forward configuration in PFSense and learn how to optimize DNS resolution in your network. By default, the PFSense works as a DNS server. And if you see here right now on the home page, main dashboard in the system information, you can see here DNS servers is 127.0.0.1, which is the local DNS server. And another DNS server is 192.168.100.1, which is my internet gateway, 192.168.100.1. If you see here the WAN information for my specific gateway, there is an IP address which is provided by the service provider and then i have the dns servers so these two dns servers are the dns servers of my service provider so which means that 192.168.100.1 is the dns server for pfsense but in fact for 192.168.100.1 which is the router provided by my service provider has this dns what does this mean that if i open any website for example i open google.com all the records are going to my service provider so i'll just close this router information here and i'll go here right now you can see the dns servers for the pfsense is 192.168.100.1 i want to change that so i'll go here to system and general setup and here is system name. I will give it a name, PFSense, for example. And here down, you can see these are the DNS server settings. So what is happening by default here that allow DNS server list to be overridden by the DHCP, point-to-point, -point, or WAN, or OpenVPN server. If you saw, I have just shown you that how ISP is having the name resolution through the DNS servers. So I need to disallow this, and I don't want my systems my devices or this pfsense to use isp for the name resolution i want pfsense to use other servers for the name resolution so i will be disabling this so what servers then will be used if i don't use override servers so i will be using cloudflare so you can see here these are the upstream dns servers 1.1.1.1 which is the upstream dns server i'll be adding another one which is 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 .8. This will be for Google. I can also add more as well, depending upon if you want to have. But two servers are enough, which means that these are the upstream DNS servers. So whenever any DNS request from my local network comes to PFSense, PFSense will give them the response from these servers or PFSense will forward these to these DNS servers. So these will be the main DNS servers. Of course, the response back will come from the PFSense but pfsense itself is in fact resolving the hosts or resolving the name servers or resolving the names from these two servers here we need to make sure that these are disabled if you don't want to use the dns servers provided by the isp or internet service provider so here are the dns resolution behavior you can leave it default so it will be using use local dns fall back to remote dns servers this is what I talked about response will be coming back from 127.0.0.1 or 192.168.240.1 which is the IP address of my DNS server or my PFSense but the response will be fall back to remote DNS server so these are two remote DNS servers so all other settings are not related to DNS so only this section is DNS server which we have configured in the general setup here I will be just saving it you can see here that the changes have been successfully applied now my all dns requests now for example if i open google.com this will be sent through pfsense to these cloudflare and google dns these are the upstream dns servers but what about the settings of the dns server within the pfsense because pfsense itself is also working as a dns server and the dns servers for pfsense is are these two but here, if you go to services and DNS resolver, so this is DNS resolver. And if you go here to services, DNS forwarder. So DNS forwarder is simple. DNS forwarder means that this particular PFSense will work as a proxy whenever you will be accessing any website. For example, if I access google.com, so google.com's IP address 
will be saved in my PF sense. And whenever any client on the network or any device on the network will be sending the request to PF sense. So PF sense will give the response because DNS addresses are already stored in the cache of PF sense. I won't recommend you to use this. Of course, the response will be faster, but your PF sense might provide the old IP address of that DNS and it might not resolve it properly. So these days uh, we are not using this. Uh, we should be only looking at the DNS resolver. DNS resolver is simple. If you enable the DNS server, so PFSense will work as a DNS server. If you disable this, PFSense won't work as a DNS server. Of course, we need to enable this. And by default, its port is 53. If I send any request, it should give me response back. So right now, if I see the details, in fact, it has configured the DNS servers 1.1.1.1 and 8.8.8.8 .8 because I initially configured these DNS servers in the DHCP lease. I'll just go back to DHCP leases and I will change my static lease. And this DNS I will remove from here, these two DNS servers, which means that now I'll be getting the DNS server as 192.168.240.1. Now you can make sure that your PFSense provides the same DNS server 192.168.240.1. So we'll go here services and DHCP server. And in DHCP server, we will make sure that the configuration of our DNS is either set to this IP or it is blank. So it will use the default. If leaves blank, then default DNS server will be used. So our default DNS server is 192.168.240.1. So this will be used as a default DNS server. If I go here now and renew my IP address, it will get the new DNS server. Let me show you that. Details you can see here the DHCP server is 192.168.240.1, which is the PFSense, and DNS server is also 192.168.240.1, which means that if I send any request, if I open any website now, my PFSense will be responding back, and the PFSense is, of course, asking from the Cloudflare or Google DNS. So here I can go to the status and I can see the DNS resolver. This is how the DNS resolver will look like. So all the responses from my network are being received. And uh, these are the server IP addresses and the DNS. So this way it is working. And if I go back here to services, DNS resolver. Uh, so these are some advanced settings in case you want to enable the SSL or TLS service. You can enable that for this particular DNS server. I'll be using all interface because I might use VPN also where I want the resolution, DNS resolution to be used, this particular IP address. Outgoing interface, these are network interface, outgoing interface, again, you can leave default until you really want to configure it to meet your requirements. And here, if you go down, you can see here a DNS sec, which is DNS security extension it is a cryptographic extension of the dns response for example you are trying to open google.com and if your dns server is uh, being attacked so it might get a response from some other servers so this one will make sure that the response comes exactly from the same server when you are opening any other website for example cnn.com so if this is not enabled of course you might not get the same response from the server this will of course protect you from different attacks there are some other settings you can leave this default so this is python module whether you want to enable or not dns query forwarding whether you want to enable or not dhcp registration uh, which means that any device on the network once it is connected it will automatically add its entry with their host names which might be good in some of the cases where you want to recognize the servers by their names. But in my case, I may not use it. I will be adding the uh, manual DNS for my servers. In this uh, settings, we'll be uh, just clicking on save and the DNS server settings will be saved here. I'll apply the changes if anything has been changed. You can see that settings has been applied. I will click on advanced settings. Uh, by default, these are enabled. So I will recommend you not to change anything until you really want to change it so here is the query name minimization if you want to ensure the privacy you can enable that 
so it will have the minimal query type or query name to the upstream servers so it all depends on your privacy settings in case you want to keep it more private so you will be using these all options at the same time then is advanced resolution options refresh support will help you to keep the or most frequent websites cached on the uh, dns server on your pfSense, of course, it will have a load. It will increase the load on the pfSense, but it will give you response quickly instead of going back to the uh, main server again and again. For example, Google.com, Facebook.com, or any frequent websites that you are accessing most of the times. So it will keep their DNS addresses within the uh, pfSense, so it will give you the response from there. This is again a great uh, feature in case you want to use it. Then is the prefetch DNS key support also. So because DNS keys are fetched earlier than the DNS server, so if you enable these both, it will again uh, reduce response time, but it might utilize more CPU and more uh, resources of your pfSense. So these are some other DNS related settings where you can, uh, where your pfSense can serve the expired uh, DNSs also. So depending upon your network requirements you can use that so all these settings are most common settings which most of the dns servers are using so you can leave them as it is but if it is your specific needs and requirements suppose as i have mentioned that if you want to have more privacy you can enable these privacy option if you want to have some advanced resolution option you can go with these resolution options so i'll save the changes here apply the changes now my dns resolver is configured and my dns resolver is working perfectly and giving the responses to all the dns requests which are coming from my local network or virtual machines or whatever wherever pfsense is working as a dns server my pfsense is now giving the responses as i mentioned that there is another service which is available related to dns which is the dns forwarder so it will in fact increase the load on the server and of course it might not give you the latest response because it might need to update its database on uh, some uh, intervals so you may not get the latest response all the time so i won't recommend you to use this until you really need to use it and then there is the dns uh, dyn dns or dynamic dns which i'll explain you in the dyn dns section here you can go back to the status and dns uh, resolver so you will see all the responses of the dns resolver